Welcome to the MH2801 video segment on the complex Fourier series of a sawtooth wave. Now, in the previous video segment, we have seen how the real Fourier series of a sawtooth wave, like the one shown below here, uh, can be computed by computing the coefficients by computing the, the real Fourier coefficients a0 equals to 1 over t integral from 0 to t of ft dt and another and, and the real coefficients f a n uh, which is 2 over t an integral from 0 to t of t cosine uh, n t dt as well as b n equals to 2 over t integral from 0 to t of t sine n t dt. So these are the real, real Fourier, series, Fourier series coefficients. Okay, now, now that we have learned that the complex Fourier series uh, is more compact than the real Fourier series, let us use the sawtooth wave again as an example and learn how to evaluate its coefficients. Now, we start off again with the fact that the coefficient cn is given in terms of integral 1 over t and integral from 0 to t of f of t e minus i 2 pi n t over capital T dt and since we know that in, uh, for this particular function the period is 2 pi so the period okay when the function first uh, uh, repeats itself capital T is equal to 2 pi so the complex exponential all have this form here e minus i and t so it makes it a lot simpler furthermore we chose our integration interval to be from minus pi to pi so that my our function can be uh, de defined in a continuous uh, single piece uh, and that function is just t so let us integrate over one period which is 2 pi, of course, and then minus from minus pi to pi of t, uh, e minus i and t dt. Now, even, a, even for this uh, complex Fourier series coefficient, it is still necessary to make use of integration by parts because of the t appearing in front of the complex exponential. So, integration by parts is what we have to do, and if we do that, First, we will get a boundary term, which is 1 over 2 pi, keeping t. So in the integration by part, we have to differentiate, uh, integrate this, and then differentiate this uh, afterwards. So if we keep t, uh, this, we keep t and integrate e minus i and t. After integration, it is still e minus i and t, except that now I have to divide by minus i n. And this will have to be evaluated at pi and minus pi. And then thereafter, I need to minus uh, 1 over 2 pi minus i n. Okay, an integral from minus pi to pi of after uh, once once I the, the second the second integral will now where we will now differentiate t. So we get 1 and then e minus i n t dt. So we can start evaluating the boundary term. So we stick in the upper limit, which is pi, into here. We will get uh, e, to, e to the minus i n pi, which is equals to, this becomes minus 1 to the end. Now if we stick in the denominator, this is what we will get again will be, will be e will be minus 1 to the n but because there's a t here because there's a t here the first pi we get a pi the second pi we put in the minus pi so it is uh, minus 1 to the pi times minus 1 to the n uh, plus pi times minus 1 to the n so the boundary term is in fact equals to uh, 1 over 2 pi times 2 pi uh, minus 1 to the n, which is equals to just minus 1 to the n. Now what about this term here? 
Now, now that we have differentiated uh, t to get 1, if we integrate this periodic function e to the minus i n t, uh, e to the minus i n t um, over one full period, this integral will vanish, so become 0, and therefore c n can be written as, uh, so that I've forgotten about the, the minus i n over here, so now let us bring the minus i n back, so that's minus 1 to the end, and then I have down here minus i n, I can write this more compactly as i over n, and then minus 1 to the n power. So this is the complex Fourier series coefficients, which you can see is uh, much easier to obtain because it is much easier to actually uh, integrate or differentiate complex exponentials.